Um, Mary and Poisa and Pierre Rienborg are amazing representatives for people within ethnic minorities and the groups that they represent. So, um, guys, for anyone that's new to this, and I suppose most of us would be, this is literally just going to be a nice conversation between Miriam and Pierre talking about, you know, the, the, the stuff they've come up against and really good stuff that's come up and anything that's um, happened to them that really, really would inspire someone from their communities to run for leadership positions. And I'm not just talking about student union, I'm talking in general. It could be a manager in a shop somewhere. Um, what I'd ask you to do, if you have any questions, is pop them into the Q&A um, and we can kind of look through them towards the end. And if there's anything that really stands out, we can. And we're expecting Pierre and Miriam to speak for about 15 minutes or so but listen there's no rush um take your time guys and thank you so much again for being part of this I'm excited to hear what you have to say so go for Miriam. Cool thank you so much Louise and Annie as well it was brilliant introductions um so yeah I I suppose I'll start with the beginning I I'm really delighted to be sharing this space with someone from back in Irish because Obviously, Pierre, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that both Youth Against Racism and Inequality and Black and Irish sort of emerged after the, the historic Black Lives Matter protests in Ireland, uh, where you had like young Black people themselves for the first time in this country being inspired by the movement in the US and taking a stand against racism. And it was just like, I remember going to the protests in Dublin that summer and just being like overwhelmed with like, obviously anger, but also like, you know, it was just amazing sentiment of, of solidarity people coming together and I think one of the key sentiments that was expressed by this first generation of young people of color who were born and raised in Ireland was that being Irish doesn't equate being white and that was like a crucial thing for us to express to cut across the daily racism that so many of us experience so emergence of platforms like you know black and Irish that are aiming to expose this reality uh, was very important and the last thing I'll say before I ask you a question is I remember when the when the protests emerged, many people were asking, why, why are people protesting? This is in the US, you know, it's not the same situation. And, but after many stories were shared in the media and many stories were shared on social media and Black, Black and Irish played a big part in that, many people who were oblivious about the racism that exists or they were oblivious about their own behavior came back on what they said and they were really challenging their attitudes and it was very powerful to show like the type of, of work we can do and what struggle can achieve in, ch in challenging consciousness. So I was just wondering, Pierre, if you could tell us a bit more, like, I don't know how long you've been in Black and Irish or about the setting up of Black and Irish, the, the use of it, the, the impact it's had, I'm sure, on people of colour in more generally society and uh, in terms of explaining what racism is, but also the, you know, showing accomplishments as well of wonderful people that are part of our community. So just the work that you've done over the past while and, and take as much time as you need, obviously. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a risk now because then it'll turn into a lecture or or a long uh, chat. But no, no, thanks uh, for posing that question, Miriam. And yeah, before I start, thank you to uh, to obviously uh, to them, that's you, Louise, and Ian, and obviously it's great to be on the same panel again with with Annie. So great um, uh, keynote speech and really um, inspiring and all the work that you're doing and continue to do from your time at the SU. Um, so no, it's great that you get the opportunity, I guess, to speak to. You to you all uh, about Black and Irish. Um, I guess that's uh, the point, I guess, of Black and Irish is just to have these kind of conversations and, and to shine a light on, on people's experiences, uh, good or bad, um, but really yet yeah, to try and bring it out uh, more in the forefront of, of people's mind. Because uh, I think like how you put it, Miriam, is that people probably were oblivious to, to what was going on in Ireland. And obviously you can see certain things, what's going on in the news and in the US or in, in even across the, the other side of the border in the UK. And kind of like, you know, I, I think that, oh, it's happening over there. So there's nothing much to worry about. Um, and yeah, just how yeah, Black Nash came was obviously the result of the George Floyd murder back in uh, June um, 2020. Um, and yeah, the, the four of us, um, yeah, Leon, Femi, Bonnie, uh, myself, obviously all former SU press, uh, uh, SU officers. So it's kind of apt that, you know, we guess we still had the activism uh, within ourselves, but we also had brought our own, had our own, I guess, unique experiences of, of either being born or, or, or growing up in Ireland as a black person. And knowing those are unique experiences. Um, that are very different um, to those um, living in America um, or, or anywhere else. Um, and yeah, just like that, it's kind of like, yeah, making it known that though we're not America, though we don't want to be like the UK or anything else like that, but we're, there's still so much uh, we can do better for. And the, the experience of black mixed race people here in Ireland uh, isn't the greatest. It's not maybe as, as bad as over there, uh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we can't uh, be oblivious to it. And that's where I start with, you know, sharing those stories. Uh, I'm starting the conversation uh, through the Instagram 
Um, and yeah, it's always it's strange, you know, when it when, I, when we start up, but I just started as an Instagram page, and obviously now it's formed into um, a, an organization um, that is really striving to to tackle racism. Uh, but like you pointed out, there's also the opportunity to platform and celebrate, you know, the great people uh, from history and throughout, you know, the modern age and today. And uh, there's so many amazing people out there, you know, athletes, you know, musicians, artists, politicians. There's so many, you know, across the community uh, who are uh, from Black and mixed race community that really are uh, doing a lot uh, for themselves and, and, you know, challenging the status quo and breaking down those barriers um, for themselves and others falling through. And we just want to make sure that it's known to Ireland and to the world if, if we can also uh, that, you know, uh, Ireland has, has the unique opportunity that we can, you know, maybe like Annie's um, maybe point out in terms of, yeah, uh, shine the light and, and really be an example to the world of how we can, you know, better integrate, you know, uh, people across different communities, uh, really not let it go to any kind of extreme, but actually recognize and accept that racism does exist in Ireland and does exist in our schools, you know, in our workplace, uh, everywhere we, we go, um, whether, you know, microaggressions or, you know, you know, like more extreme name calling, um, or you know, if obviously we've we've seen obviously um, attacks and uh, on a fortune we've obviously had our own instant this uh, back in December 2021 when obviously an armed guardie shot a black person uh, just over and obviously in Blanchestown, not too far from the TW uh, Blanchestown campus. So again, it shows that you know we have to be careful uh, and not let ourselves um, ignore the facts uh, of the matter that racism does exist in Ireland. Um, but no, we try not to dwell too much uh, on the bad side of things. You also want to yeah celebrate and uh, and recognize that yeah yeah there's some amazing uh, opportunities out there. There's some amazing work uh, that people across the community are doing, um, and, and we should just yeah enjoy and celebrate that. Um, so hopefully that <laughs> gives a nice intro. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> does. Thank you so much. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, I don't know what to add to that, <laughs> but obviously the. The theme of the day is is leadership as well. And I think uh, that'd be a bit crazy to talk for 15 minutes and not mention that. But I think in everything that, that you said, leading representation is a key feature of the work that we do. And mm -hmm. so I'd be interested into going a bit more into what type of, of leadership, you know, Black and Irish is trying to build and also challenges and difficulties that both organizations have faced in trying to build leadership, because obviously the reality of racism existing means that you do <laughs> end up facing roles when trying to like, uh, build leadership so maybe uh, I don't want to abuse my power of con conversation leader to speak too much so um, I wanted to talk a bit uh, in a minute about the the key campaigns that Yeri has worked on in particular you mentioned uh, Georgian Kensher who was the young uh, black man in in, um, in Blanche that was killed in, in December 2020 and so like the type of leadership we try to build in the community and what's come across that but first I I, I wanted to to know if there was any like uh, examples you wanted to bring in in terms of like trying to build leadership, but also challenges, difficulties that you might have faced uh, with with Black and Irish. Yeah, um, yeah, I guess leadership is 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 across uh, one of the spectrums of of what we try to do and where yeah, um, Black and Irish are, are trying to achieve there. Obviously, it'd be easy to say that yeah, we wanted to uh, across obviously we work across six areas, you know, of, of politics, media entertainment, uh, education, um, probably going to miss community uh, and, and, and those um, that, yeah, we're trying to obviously platform and give opportunities for those. Obviously, there's leadership potential and opportunities there. So it's not just you know, a political spectrum of, obviously, we have Eric, uh, our political coordinator, who's really trying to get more Black mixed race people involved in politics and, you know, aware of it, because for some, it's, it feels like, um, because they haven't they're not seeing their voice being represented or her, so therefore they're not wanting to engage in the process, whether to you know know that they can vote in local elections or you know that they can maybe run for a position. And we've seen many, uh, you know, um, black uh, mixed race people run for positions like mayors, you know, um, no, local council positions. Um, so therefore, yeah, there's an opportunities there. So yeah, obviously there's leadership potentials there, and, and we obviously try to engage on that kind of political spectrum to bring more you know, voices and representation in that area. Uh, but also, yeah, another area is like, you know, in music, because um, I know there's so many amazing artists out there who are really, you know, smashing the scene and in terms of the opportunity 
uh, that they're taking to really, um, in, I guess, embody even the in their music the the Black and Irish culture, uh, which is an amazing way. Um, and some people um, obviously enjoy that and love that, uh, but some people are kind of it's not really um, maybe out there enough in the you know the normal mainstream radio or or in the entertainment space as much. So again, given that representation, that you know there's so many talented out there that they should be able to be have the platform and the space. Um, similarly in sports and, and the media so i guess we're using from the experience of our i guess background like i said in terms of student union and, and the leadership um experience that we've gained and then yeah trying to do the different areas that we're working on push those kind of opportunities uh, for others to to shine light because then they can you know bring out the best in themselves and and show their leadership uh, potential because i know yeah, when you think of leader, you think of just someone who's elected or someone who's, you know, ran for a big position. But yeah, we're all leaders in our own, like obviously people here in the panel, including yourself, Miriam, and everybody else, we are all doing, taking leadership uh, roles wherever we're doing and whatever we are. Um, so therefore, yeah, it's an opportunity to show that, yeah, it's not just in one particular area, but across the spectrum of society. And um, really, that's that's what we're trying to do, um, and we'll continue to strive to do so that, yeah, again, there's a representation uh, of uh, Black mixed race people across wide Irish society. Yeah, sorry, I'm going to jump in really quickly and save four minutes left, okay? Oh, no problem at all. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah, no, I think that 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 is like that makes complete sense, and I think uh, another thing that I wanted to add to that as well is like the the, the necessity for community leadership in particular, because like and and. I think like uh, something that like Annie talked about was like, you know, uh, sort of like the inequality that lives in the system that we live in and how like, you know, people of color and people from oppressed minority groups, ethnic minorities, et cetera, tend to be most affected by these things. That means that like when we have to compete in this system because it's a system that pits people against each other, it's more difficult for people of color. It's more difficult for people from minority groups and the necessity to actually have, you know, working class community leaderships that are going to represent these people is very important. Um, so yeah, so, so just something that I wanted to add to all of that. Um, I suppose, uh, yeah, what, what advice would you, uh, would you have for any student here who'd like to get involved, you know, obviously in fighting against oppression and equality or get involved in like, like, is there anything that like you, you've done over the, the course of like establishing Black and Irish and, and working with people, uh, that you would do differently if you said it again or any advice that you would give to, to students? Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, it's good always, yeah, to reflect and see, yeah, where we we could have done differently, and even where we are at this stage. That, like, yeah, we're we're uh, though, yeah, we start as a platform, and we're all all working as volunteers across uh, the fifteen currently on the team, and we're recruiting uh, more people to join the team, but we're all still doing it as volunteers. So whether we should just yeah set up uh, like other kind of community groups like Yari or or Massey actually set up initially as an organization, so that we can have that quick uh, immediate impact um though i know yeah we are making some impact but we know that there's so much more we could do if we had the, the capacity to you know do this as like whether a full-time uh, work and, and everything like that uh, but i think that we're happy that you know we're 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 you know what we've done and across different areas uh, in the capacity that we've been able to it's been great uh, but uh, and we're working towards that uh, but in terms of your question, in terms for anyone that looking into running for leadership, and whether it be obviously in soon soon, but I think across the, the space, but I think we we have unique opportunities now that people can use wherever they are, whether they're on social media or in their workplace or in sports or in you know working community groups that they can you know step up and, and be that voice or or trying to make a change in any way. So whether that's speaking up or or taking you know taking the opportunity that you can. So I know sometimes it's, it's uh, for those, you know, an ethnic minority, they might be afraid to, you know, you know, go for a position or go for a role because, you know, they're not sure if they're up to it or if they'll actually be given the opportunity to take that position. And if they don't see any other role models or people who've, who've both taken those positions um, because of whatever barriers or, or lack of opportunities. But I think, yeah, if you do have that chance, just go for it. Um, whatever the outcome, um, you never know that the yeah, door that you could really open up. Um, but even if yeah, that door is left shut, you can still speak up and, and push through uh, that door so that yeah, the opportunity can, if it's not for you, but maybe others after you can can take those opportunities. So yeah, 
wherever you can um definitely as a student uh, in wherever class even from a best class trip or in the yeah working in a, in a local shop um or you know being involved in your community group or ga club or anything like that yeah there's there's capacity there and opportunities there to to you know be the voice or or, or take the lead uh, and you never know what opportunities might open up for you i never knew that you know starting off uh in college and study law and get involved in student, student societies that I'll end up being here and um, also running Black and Irish and involved in other kind of projects uh, and using my voice where I can there. Um, so yeah, the opportunities are endless uh, or as T Dublin say, in infinite possibilities. Um, so therefore, yeah, hopefully people will be inspired uh, to give it their their shot. Uh, never know. Thanks a million guys. Oh. Here, ever the politician. I need to, we need to kind of frame that and quote that in for the possibilities and send it on to Mr. Professor Fitzpatrick. You'll love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, guys, thanks so much for that. That's amazing. And there was so much that came from the conversation here. Miriam, you're amazing too. I'm just wondering, is there any questions from the floor? Um, I do have one and it's kind of more along the lines of like, are there any plans? I know, Miriam, you've, kind of, you've acted as a conversation leader and thank you so much for that. But in terms of Yari or your work with the Socialist Party, or is there anything that you guys have coming up over the next few months or even with Black and Irish that would encourage leadership positions or just leadership in general? Um, or is that something that you could maybe take on board and bring back to your parties in particular? Um, and that would be a question that I would have for you guys before we finish up. Want to go ahead, Miriam? Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. I can say something. Well, I suppose uh, a bit a big aspect. I think that that's something that 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 Pierre mentioned in terms of the type of like community groups that you know Yari tried to to build, especially in Dublin 15 after the 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 killing of of George and Kensho. Is that like? It's it's very difficult for a lot of people affected by racism to take leadership position when like there's so much racism in society because you might not feel confident. I mean, all the things that Pierre said, I, I fully agree with, and it might be hard sometimes to be like, I'm going to be that person that's going to go and get involved. In, like, you know, even when it's uh, talking about like management positions in a in a workplace or even running for like uh, elections and, and student bodies and stuff like that. But I think the the type of work that we would really want to try and do, and especially in the context, you know of the, the far right figures and indiv like indiv far right individuals and far right groups that have tried to, you know, to use the housing crisis, use gender violence, use genuine concerns that people have to increase racism, whip up racism, you know, and in the past like few months, that's something that we, we really want to cut across, like something that we've been doing over the past few years, like since the killing of George and Kensho, because his death was also used by the far right to try and divide the community in Dublin 15. And it's it's one of the most multicultural community. I think it's actually the most multicultural <laughs> community in uh, in Ireland. And the fact really tried to divide to to use this like what Annie was talking about, capitalist line of argument that we have to be pit against one another, that there's not enough resources for everyone, and then try to like really like put forward horrible, rank, racist lies about about black people and black men in particular. And that's something that like we absolutely like want have wanted to build campaigns to fight against to really expose the truth because. People are not necessarily going to come out, communities are not going to come out and fight for justice if they don't think there's any justice to be fought for. So you have to go and cut across the lies first before you can build campaigns, before you can build movements. And that's been a big uh, aspect of the work that we've done. And that's the work that we continue to do, like recently, alongside Rosa, Social Service Movement and Transcend Intersex Pride, Dublin, Ollie's going to speak later uh, on fighting transphobia as well, I'm sure. Uh, we, we've come together to organize a rally against the far right, against racism, misogyny, transphobia, because all these things are being utilized, you know, to, to put us against one another in the context of a, of a big crisis. And we need we need to fight against these things generally. And I think that uh, building building community leadership, like giving confidence to people that actually the majority, you know, the Ireland for All March that happened recently, International Women's Day, that were all about actually sending the objective message that the majority of people don't agree with racism the majority of people don't agree with the far right mm -hmm. refugee protests and we actually want to continue to build that type of struggle like we did for repeal marriage equality that challenge backwards attitudes but also when when real change for everyone starting with education obviously which i'm sure students want to students of color want to be involved more in 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 raising their voice and talk about the type of changes that need to to, to happen in education so sorry i went all over the place but that's now that's here, here, Miriam. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. And I'm sorry, I just want to get one more round question in before we move on. Sorry, Pierre. Eileen, I know you have your hand raised. You're up, up next, but you have a question for the floor. Yeah. Uh, and again, yeah, you kind of uh, touched on it. It was just, do you think things are worse now 
for uh, people of colour, for black and brown people with the uh, rise of, uh, of the far right? And really, how can we tackle that as, um, as people from minority groups? But I think you've answered it around leadership as well. And just some other comments I would touch on is that, like, I, I, I think I was a better leader before I was a senator. Do you know that kind of way? Because then when, when you have uh, when you have a label put on you, you know, you have to be mindful of how, how now I, I don't be, but you always have it in the back of your head how uh, to be mindful. And if we go in and tackle racism, say, in, in the Shannon, we are trouble risers. You know what I mean? We're, we're not, uh, we're at it again, but yet they're able to stand up and be openly racist. They're able to stand up and be against people, poor people, people from uh, minority groups, and they're just doing their job. So I find it very, um, very daunting. And right now with the rise of the far right, you know, how, how does people like us come together in, um, in in solidarity and compassion. Uh, and even I see that and say TikTok, you know, and that may be very difficult for a young person, a young black person to say, actually, I want to go farther in my life. But then looking at the rise of the far right and not having that hope or belief that they can actually do it. So we do need leadership, but how, how, how do we encourage younger people to take that step into leadership? Go ahead. Yeah, no. yeah, no, thanks for, for that comment. Uh, I mean, I think, yeah, I wish we all had like the, the, the magic ball uh, to try and fix it all um, in a way and, and find all the answers uh, to it. But I think, yeah, collectively, uh, as you like said, come together, whether like the Iron for All March or, yeah, bring the discussion uh, at, you know, the doll or, or any kind of other public forums uh, and collectively we can find a way to, yeah, challenge that we've seen yeah with the march uh, that there's so many people out there who who are against this kind of um wave uh, you can say that now we outnumber uh those and we just need to continue to you know use our platform use our voice and opportunities uh but for yeah young people uh, and i think yeah one of the challenge um and sometimes the yeah, fear is that sometimes uh, if we don't try and tackle this from a young age, uh, we we then we have a bigger challenge in terms of how we tackle it uh, at the moment. So that's why obviously we try and work as much as possible and, and you know bring those conversations around racism and uh, being anti-racist and anti-bias in schools, education, because they're going to be the future leaders and whether it be in teachers, whether it be in accountants, whether it be, you know, people working in, in, on Gara Sheikhan or politicians or working in Facebook or Google who will have those impacts. And if they're not taught in a way, um, that's more uh, inclusive um, and understanding diversity and celebrating that uh, in a way from a young age, uh, then, yeah, the challenge that we face now will only just continue to to get worse. Um, hate to say if it's, it's worse now, um, I'm always a hopeful person uh, that, you know, uh, there is still, uh, you know, Ireland is a great place uh, for black mixed race people, but obviously it can be a lot better um, if, if we all work together uh, on that side. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, mm -hmm. so can I yours, Louise? Is that okay? No, please. Um, I'd love to hear your input, <laughs> guys. This is brilliant. Thank you so much for your question, Eileen. It was amazing. Yeah, it was. It was a really good question, and I, I do think things like for for a while, in January, February, March got a, a little bit worse for people of color. Like I, I felt it myself, <laughs> to be honest. And I think that's because, you know, like th there was just this like vacuum open, like just like if there's no challenge to 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 the far right obviously it's just going people with racist ideas are going to feel emboldened by the anti-refugee protests and stuff like that so just people were like there were stories every day worse than before and it's like that's why the Allen for march and international women's day and all these protests were so important because they were putting a stamp on things like actually saying no we're not going to accept that and it was mainly like there was a lot of young people involved because like the, the generation that has been that has been fighting on all the issues being like housing protests, repeal, Black Lives Matter, climate change. It's been young people, young people who are bearing the brunt of like all the crisis who are seeing a world that's like literally being set on fire. And they're like, no, we're not going to stand for that. And I think that's the key. It's like we have to go and organize like, uh, you know, grass, grassroots campaigns, communities actually go and and work with young people in, in, uh, in trying to build campaigns that actually like have clear like a clear program, clear demands, clear way forward to actually like build, you know, a movement that challenges. In general, uh, in, in general uh, yeah, like, you know, we talk about men at the top and we talk about gender equality. I yeah. haven't seen the black man at the top in Ireland. I haven't seen the traveller man at the top in Ireland, you know, 
and mm. and 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 that sometimes is is my argument. You know, I haven't seen like a a, a black woman or a traveller woman being a minister where they talk about women that's ministers. But most importantly, I remember around the repeal campaign trying to get in uh, black women into that campaign, brown women, traveller women, which was a very, very tough campaign to be part of. So I do think that, like, you know, we, we as you said, um, like we, we push through the barriers and open up the doors and keep pushing through. But in 2023, that them spaces should be should be there, you know. Just, mm-hmm. just you know, no. I mean, I, mean, I think that any movement that is built, I absolutely agree. They have to have anti-racist, anti-misogynistic, anti-transphobic demons within them, so that actually there is the space for anyone from any communities to be represented and to have their own demons within the broader demons. Like if you're gonna fight for housing, it's gonna benefit everyone, but it's gonna it has to has anti-racism and it. it has to has anti-sexism, anti-transphobia. I absolutely agree with that, and like. It's also like we need community, when, when I talk about working class community representation, it's also this thing of like, it would be brilliant to have a person of color, you know, you know, more people of color in the doll and stuff like that. But when you look at Leo Varadkar, for example, obviously he experiences racism and homophobia and that's horrible, but he doesn't represent the LGBT community or people of color. And actually we have to have people that are going to go and, and, and more for the interest of the majority and not like protect like the landlords and <laughs> the rich and so on. So I think there's also the need of like, uh, real real representation uh, based on like what what people stand for and not just you know uh, their background but I, I fully fully agree that needs those doors need to be pushed and and that needs to be part of of the program of the movements that we built so absolutely agree. And, and this is why I love Miriam this is this is a woman that inspires me on a bit on a daily basis oh, that was amazing guys thank you so much